Welcome everyone to Hail Hydra. You will be working together as a team of S.H.I.E.L.D. heroes attempting to defend New York City from a nefarious onslaught of villains. That would be easy, except there's secretly Hydra agents sabotaging your missions. Hi, I'm Nick Metzler. I'm the game designer for Hail Hydra, and I work for Spin Master in association and partnership with Cardinal and Marvel Games. This video has been made to walk you through your first game of Hail Hydra. By the time this video is over, you have completed an entire game of Hail Hydra and hopefully have saved New York City from destruction. This video will cover everything that's found in the first game rules located on the instruction sheet in your box. Now, keep in mind though, this is a modified version of the game and the full version of the game is a little bit more complicated, but it's got a lot more exciting mechanics and should definitely be played second. In Hail Hydra, you will all be acting as heroes, trying to defeat a stack of villains. If New York City goes down from 27 all the way to zero health, Hydra's gonna win. But if you can defeat all villains before the city is destroyed, S.H.I.E.L.D. will win. This game plays five to eight players, and there's a different amount of Hydra agents per the amount of players there are. If there's five people playing, there's gonna be two Hydra agents. Six people playing, two Hydra agents. Seven people and eight people, it's gonna be three Hydra agents each. Hail Hydra is a social deduction game. If you're unfamiliar with what social deduction games are, they're usually characterized by every player at the table having a secret role. There's lying, finger pointing, and persuasion as you try to figure out who's working towards the team's goal and who's actually sabotaging it. Thirteen health discs, three defense discs, 18 villain cards, one first player token, one Metal Avengers Tower Mover, 80 attack cards, 40 blue and 40 red, 8 loyalty discs, 5 shield and 3 hydra, 14 hero cards, 1 oversized New York City card, first game rules and full game rules instruction sheets. The setup for Hail Hydra is pretty simple. Remember, this video is meant to be a walkthrough, so please perform these actions at the exact time that I'm performing them too. The first thing that you want to do you're gonna take the 80 attack cards, you're gonna shuffle them, you're gonna place them face down on the draw pile on top of the New York City card. If your team ever runs out of attack cards completely, and there's no more in the draw pile, go ahead and reshuffle all the cards in the discard pile to make the new draw pile. Next, you're gonna choose the villains for this run. There's four different types of villains signified by the colors and amount of skulls on the back of the villain cards. You're gonna take one of these one skull villain cards, you're gonna place it face down. Discard the rest, don't look at them. You're gonna take one of these level two skull villains, you're gonna place it face down, discard the rest. Then you're going to take one level three villain, place it face down, discard the rest, and then you're gonna be left with this final villain. Don't do anything with it, put it away. You are not ready for Red Skull's strength yet. So put those down, put these back in the box. Put the level three villain on the bottom, the level two villain in the middle, and the level one villain on top. Next, you're gonna to wanna to count how many people are playing the game. This is a five to eight player game, and the amount of Hydra agents in the game will depend on how many players are playing. So for example, if there's six players playing, there's going to be two Hydra agents. So place two of these Hydra discs in the mix here and place four shield agents in the middle Put these back in the box and give these a good shuffle up here on the table. Every player should then take one and go ahead and look at it secretly. Don't let anybody else see what disc you have. Once that's done, you're going to place the Avengers Tower Mover somewhere on this health track, depending on how many players you have in the game. Next, every single player is going to choose a hero to play as. All these heroes are going to be the same for the first game rules. So don't pay any attention to the text on the bottom or any of the text on the back. You can just forget about it. Just pick whichever one that you associate most with or whichever one that you wanna be for this game. Once you've picked, feel free to put the rest of them back in the box. In this game, the people that are Hydra will know who each other are. To make sure that this happens, could everybody now actively please close their eyes? Go ahead, yep, yeah, I'm talking to you. Please close your eyes. Only listen to my voice at this point. With the two Hydra agents, the ones with the Hydra disc, please open their eyes and identify each other. Just look at each other, don't say anything. Definitely don't say anything out loud. And go ahead and close your eyes. Now, everybody please open your eyes. 
You ready to begin the game? The last player to have read a Marvel comic gets the first player token. They're going to be the first player for the game. Go ahead and decide that now. We're going to put it on Nick Fury. Now don't fret about not understanding this next step. You don't need to understand it to understand the game. The person to the left of the first player token is going to draw two attack cards to start. The next person to their left is going to draw four attack cards. Everybody else is going to draw six. So imagine these guys all have six here. As soon as that occurs, you are ready to play the game. You may look at your attack cards. So before we start, let's take a look at an example villain. In the game, you're going to be attacking these villains. As soon as they get flipped up, there's some things you might want to notice. The first thing is up here. That's their health. You're going to give them the amount of health discs that is their health. So for example, this guy has five health, you're going to give them five health discs. This number right here is the amount that they're going to do to the city if they remain alive. So after you perform your team's attack, they're going to attack the city if they're alive. They would do three damage. In addition, some villains have special buffs, denoted by a special symbol right here. This guy, Whiplash, has defense, denoted by this defense token right here. If they've got a special buff, either defense or quick attack, please read their special attack because it will affect your current offensive in some way. This guy's got defense, and he says he has one defense, so you're going to give him a defense token. If they have a quick attack, it means they're going to affect this offensive in some way right now. This game is played out in offensives and missions. Now, since this is the first game rules, I'm going to walk you through it. You should perform these actions as I'm doing them as well. The way you can think of offensives is kind of like a round in the game. But on the first offensive in the game, you're not going to perform the first step, so you're going to skip it. We'll talk about it in just a sec. The second step is that every single hero is going to lay down one, two, or three attack cards face down on top of their hero card. As soon as every single hero has done so, the person with the first player token is going to collect all of the attack cards from every single hero, shuffle them up face down so that no one knows who played what, and reveal them all at the same time. Once you've flipped over all the cards and added them up, you're going to get a, a total sum. It's either going to be positive or negative. In this case, it's positive, and it's going to be positive 5. You're going to do 5 damage as a result to the villain. Now, this villain typically has 5 health, represented by the, the 5 health discs here, but he's also got a defense. He's got 1 defense here, which means that this 5 damage does a total of 4 damage to this guy because of the, the 1 defense. So he'd have 1 health left. And since Whiplash is still alive, Whiplash is then going to attack the city, whatever his amount here is. So he's going to do 3 damage to the city, 1, 2, 3, and he's also going to do a special effect. Every single villain has a specific special effect that they're going to do every single time that they attack the city. Uh, his special effect is that his defense increases by one. So you're going to add one defense disc. So this guy is still alive. Because of that, the first player token is then going to pass, and this is the first step that we skipped again. So this is always going to happen every offensive, just not the first offensive. So they're going to pass the first player token. The player with the first player token is going to discard all their attack cards face down into the discard pile. So they're going to discard theirs face down, and they're going to draw six new attack cards. This is the only time you're going to get a complete refresh of new attack cards. Everybody else is going to get one new attack card. So there's a bit of an incentive not to throw all of your team's cards all at the same time because you're only going to get one new one per turn, and it's going to take a couple turns, offensives, for this thing to get all the way around. So if you haven't defeated the villain, you're going to continue playing offensives until you do. But wait, before you continue playing offensives, there's one thing I forgot to mention. Communication rules. When you're playing attack cards face down, and even when attack cards are flipped up, you are never allowed to be specific about what you played. So this is a plus three right here. I'm not allowed to say that this is a plus three. I can only say this is good or this is bad. I can't say this is super good. I can't say this is very good. I can't say this is the best blue card in the game. Well, it's not, but you still can't say that. You can only say this is good or this is bad. And I'm very serious about that. Like, don't ever, 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 ever say anything except this is good or this is bad. 
I mean, I guess you could say nothing too, that's totally fine. There is one other thing to note. When you're playing multiple cards, you must be specific about how many you play. So you could say, I'm playing one good and one bad, or I'm playing two goods. That's totally fine. Everybody's able to know how many you're playing. At various times during the game, you may be forced to play a card that's not with your team. This is okay, it's part of the game. And it's probably because you threw a lot of your team's cards early and now you're, you're struggling because you're only getting one card per turn so you don't have any more of your team's cards. This deck has got 80 cards. There's 40 blue cards, 40 red cards. But the red card numbers are actually a little bit higher. They go from negative two to negative five. The blue cards are plus one to plus four. Because there's more shield members in the game, they have a bit of an advantage from the amount of cards being put in. The Hydra members have a bit of an advantage with the numerals. Since you're playing along with this video, I recommend that you stop here until you beat your first villain. Congratulations team, you've defeated your first villain. The first mission is complete. Now note, there could have been a couple offensives in a mission, but there might have also been only one offensive in a mission. A mission begins when a villain is flipped over and a mission ends when it's defeated. So you guys are about to start your second mission and the mission starts when this guy is flipped over. But because you're about to face a level two villain signified by the two Hydra Skulls on the back here, something else needs to occur and it's very important. Your team is about to enter a knockout phase. The knockout phase, oof, it's my favorite portion of the game. This portion is a voting portion of the game where you informally discuss who you believe to be Hydra and then you get to knock him out of the next mission. It's dangerous though, because if you knock out a shield agent, now there's only three shield agents and two Hydra agents. That gives Hydra a better opportunity to take you guys out and take out the, the, the city too. But if you knock out a Hydra agent, theoretically there's gonna be less red cards in the mix and you'll know you've taken out a Hydra agent. There's no 100% way to really prove anybody is anything, so it's important to watch how many cards people are playing. It's a good way to deduce who might be throwing cards. To begin the knockout phase, you're gonna take out a phone and set a timer for two minutes. After the two minutes are up, every single player is going to put a finger up in the air like this and count down three, two, one. And everybody's going to point at somebody after the two minutes are up. The person that has the majority of fingers pointed at them is knocked out for the entire next mission. If there's no majority, and say for example, there might be a tie, no one is voted out and the entire team moves forward into the next mission. Now, you are allowed to throw away your vote. You're allowed to abstain just by keeping your fingers straight up in the air. This basically means that you're not gonna be incriminating anybody, but it also might mean that you're losing an opportunity to knock somebody out and gain more information. If the majority of people are still pointing up at the end, no one is knocked out and the team keeps moving on to the next mission. Now, if you've been knocked out, don't fret. You're not out forever. You're gonna be coming back after the next mission is over. A, you know, when the villain is defeated but you will still get the first player token like normal. So if we pass this to you, you're still gonna get it. You're gonna discard cards like normal, you're still gonna draw like normal, but you're not gonna be playing any cards face down on your hero card to attack the villain. Instead, before anybody plays, you're going to hand one or two attack cards face down to any single hero that is on the mission. The reason you're doing this is if you're shield, you can try to pick out who you think might be shield and give good cards to them, or if you're Hydra, you can feed bad cards to Hydra members so that they can play it on their own. So go, let's, let's make this happen. Let's knock somebody out, let's take somebody down. Go ahead, set that timer for two minutes and I'll see you. Pause this. All right, time's up. I hope you knocked out somebody in the mission. Now that you've completed this knockout phase, you're gonna take on the next mission. Remember, a mission begins when you flip over this card, so go ahead, flip over it now. Give this villain the appropriate amount of health discs, and you're ready to start the next mission. Go ahead, pause this video, and come see me again once you've defeated this guy. So I see that you're playing this video again. That must mean the second villain is defeated. Congratulations. But wait, you're about to face a level three villain. What does that mean? It means you're gonna have the opportunity to take out two people for this next mission. You and your team are going to have 
two rounds of voting. Now, how that's gonna work is you're gonna set the time for two minutes. Two minutes are gonna count down, you're gonna be yelling at each other. You're gonna be pointing fingers, and after that two minutes are up, maybe one person has been knocked out, maybe not. Regardless, the second time is then going to start. You're gonna set a timer again for another two minutes. It's gonna count down, you're gonna point again. Maybe a second person is knocked out, maybe not. Something you should know, if somebody's knocked out the first time, they are still able to talk, they are still able to vote for that second time. It's totally cool. And if a clear majority of people want to end the voting round early, they can. It has to be a clear majority though. Once both voting rounds have been exhausted, the next mission begins, whether or not players have been voted out or not. Go ahead, flip over this last villain. Remember, since this is the first game playthrough, there's only gonna be three villains. This is the final one. And as a result, there's one extra rule, the name of the game. If you are secretly a Hydra agent, at this point in the game, you are allowed to announce, Hail Hydra, and flip over your loyalty disc, claiming loyalty to Hydra in front of everyone. As soon as you do this, your rules change. You're gonna immediately damage the city three, directly attacking the city, love it. And you're going to play all attack cards face up and play them first, regardless of whoever has the, the first player token. And you do this so that everybody knows exactly what you're playing. If the city is destroyed at any point in time, Hydra wins. If all three villains have been defeated, Shield wins. And now that you've completed your entire first game of Hail Hydra, you're ready to take on the full game rules. These full game rules have a couple more awesome experiences, including hero abilities. Every single hero's got a special ability that can they, they can use at specific times to win the game for Shield or bury the team as Hydra. Next, there's gonna be five villains per game instead of just three. Red Skull, the final villain in the game. He makes the game extremely difficult for Shield to win. And finally, Hail Hydra. In the full game rules, as Hydra, you can actually reveal yourself at any point in time during the game, as long as it's during the mission. After you do that, your rules change and you might be able to actively help the villain destroy the city. So once you've taken down this first game, come back to me for the full game rules. See you there.